In this video, we will give you a brief introduction to our Corona ventilation project. The project was initiated in spring 2020 at our University of Applied Sciences Karlsruhe. Sadly, many people died due to the lack of ventilators. Nowadays, in rich countries, this problem was overcome. But poor countries still do not enough ventilators because of the high cost of these medical devices. It was the motivation for us to develop a low-cost ventilator in contrast to other projects utilizing a simple back-squeezing approach which is not effective due to respiratory doctors, our goal was to develop a high-tech device. The functionality is planned to be comparable to professional ventilators applied to COVID-19 patients suffering from the so-called acute respiratory distress syndrome. It's an ongoing project. Let's have a look at the details. Hello everybody. I would like to give you a quick overview of our Corona ventilator prototype version 2. Starting with the mixing chamber. In order to realize different oxygen concentrations in the inhalation air, a controlled mixing chamber is required. In the lower line, compressed air is supplied via an oil separator, which is then reduced to the desired pressure by a pressure regulator. In the upper line, pure oxygen is supplied from a gas cylinder. The oxygen as well gets reduced to the desired pressure by another pre-pressure independent pressure regulator. To perform the mixing task, each line is followed by an electrically driven proportional valve, with which the flow of the individual gases can be adjusted. By controlling the valves anti-proportionally, the oxygen concentration can thus be adjusted between 21 and 100%. The oxygen level of the respiration air mixture is measured with a galvanic O2 sensor. Next on, the pressure control loop. The pressure after the mixing chamber is still too high for artificial respiration. In addition, ventilation should not only be an opening and closing of the air supply, it should rather be a closed loop control procedure. This requires an additional proportional valve as well as a relative pressure sensor. The control loop is calculated on a sensor actual ESP. It now, depending on the resulting pressure in the system, controls the inhalation airflow with the proportional valve. Tubing. The breathing air is then guided through the tubing package towards the lung. In our prototype, we use a test lung with one liter of dynamic volume and the compliance of an average adult. The exhaled air is passed through the second tube towards the exhaust valve. This opens fully on exhalation. The peep pressure is controlled by an ordinary peep valve and assisted by the pressure control loop. Further safety precautions. There are some more components in our prototype that serve to ensure the safety of the patients. These include the overpressure valve as well as the underpressure valve. These allow the patient to cough or breathe in at any time. There is also an alarm controller, which monitors the respiration values and functionality of other controllers. Furthermore, two flow sensors are installed in our prototype for later respiration modes, such as assisted ventilation. These measure the airflow during inhalation and exhalation. A temperature and a humidity sensor are also planned. Visualization and control. All the sensor data is collected by the sensor actor ESP and is sent to the communication ESP via ESP now. This controller takes over the communication to the server. There the data is assigned to the patient and stored in the database. When the doctors call the website, they can log into their patients and display the live ventilation curves or change respiration parameters. Later, they will be also able to get alarm notifications and visualize previous respiration data from the database. 